covering 21 pilots and their modern punchy drum sound in the last episode, let's go back a few decades and check out some 70s and 80s sounds, this time with Fleetwood Mac. Art of Drumming is not just a YouTube channel, but also a free platform where you can find numerous drum-related courses filmed by major international artists. Head on over and join our growing community! Back in 1967, Peter Green started a new project and wanted to have his favorite rhythm section on board. They previously played together in John Mayall and the Blues Breakers, and since Peter Green liked to call bass player John McVie and Mick Fleetwood Fleetwood Mac, this was destined to become the band's name. Even though John McVie hesitated to quit his former band and start a completely new project, he soon was in and the journey began. Even though the self-titled debut album released in 1968 managed to reach the UK's top 10 in the album charts, it took a few more years and numerous lineup changes until they had their international breakthrough with their 10th studio album, once again self-titled, in 1975. Prior to this album, the band, or let's say the members that were left, Mick Fleetwood, John McVie, and his wife Christine McVie, had relocated from the UK to California in 1974, and in search of a new guitarist, they came across Lindsey Buckingham. But besides hiring just him, his girlfriend and duo partner in Buckingham Nicks, Stevie Nicks joined as well, and the lineup for the most successful period in Fleetwood Mac's band history was complete. This lineup didn't change for over 10 years. The following album, Rumors, released in 1977, was about to become their best-selling album and won the Grammy Award for Album of the Year in 1977 and can also be found on countless best albums of all time lists all across the internet. For this video, we picked Go Your Own Way off this album, so let's have a listen. A great example of leading the band's dynamic with groove changes. From a tom groove to an eighth note hi-hat groove and then reaching the top level with a four on the snare pattern. But hey, we're here to talk about the sound, not the grooves. Looking at some older photographs of Mick Fleetwood's drum kits, you might not think that the drum shells are as big as they are, but keep in mind this guy is almost two meters tall and this definitely puts it into perspective. For our kit, we chose a 24 inch kick drum, 12 and 14 inch rack toms, and 16 and 18 inch floor toms. The toms are fitted with ambassador coated heads on the batter and ambassador clear heads on the rezzo side. Those single ply heads have the right warm quality we need for this sound. Also, there's no hard hitting involved here, so the durability of single ply heads is totally fine. The tuning of the batter head is as low as possible with a slightly higher tuned rezzo head. To shorten the sustain and control the tone, we used a crown gel and a piece of tape on the rezzo head and engaged the internal dampeners. Captured with biodynamic M201s, this is what they sound like. For the snare, we chose a 14 by 6.5 maple shell. In our case, it's a PDP concept maple drum. It actually looks quite similar to the Icon Snare DW created in collaboration with Mick Fleetwood. Just imagine we have the same beautiful Rumors artwork. We installed a coded controlled sound drum head for a nice controlled sound, and to get that pretty low short 70s snare sound, we added two of Mr. Muff's mini muffs. Here's the tuning, and this is what the drum sounds like mic'd up with a Shure SM57 on top and a Biodynamic M88 as bottom mic. Now let's continue with the biggest drum in the setup, the massive 24 inch kick drum. Just as with the toms, we went to the coated ambassador as batterhead. 
With this head you get the right warmth, but also a very open sound. So it was clear right from the start that we would need some muffling afterwards. We also chose to go with a rezo head with a huge hole, so placing a blanket and some pillows inside the shell for muffling was very easy. Also, the huge hole enabled the air to exit the drum very easily and thereby shortened the sustain. With a few strips of tape to keep the muffling where it needs to be, the kick drum is ready. With a Biodynamic M88 inside the shell, this is our Fleetwood Mac kick drum sound. Now with the drums in place, next up are the cymbals. Today, Mick Fleetwood plays Zildjian cymbals and actually likes to use pretty bright sounds. For example, A custom crashes are part of his regular setup. We chose to go with darker sounds that suit the sound of the original recordings rather than his live sound today. For this purpose, we went with 15 inch hi hats, and after testing back and forth with 15 inch K light and Avidus hats, we ended up combining both. So it's a K light top with an Avidus bottom. The ride is a 24 inch K light ride, and the three crashes are a 20 inch K crash ride, an 18 inch K dark thin crash, and a 20 inch Avidus. For a single overdub, we also placed a 19 inch Armand ride, a beautiful baby, but more about that later. The overheads are M90 Pro X's, hi-hat and ride are both recorded with Biodynamic MC930s, and another M201 is placed as a room mic. Last thing to install, even though it's not played, is the characteristic cowbell mounted above the rack toms. With Pascal now in his signature Mick Fleetwood outfit, here's his version of Go Your Own Way. What a huge hit, and what a massive drum sound. Now for the second track we chose, we need to jump 10 years ahead in time and check out their 1987 released song Everywhere. Totally different vibe and very different snare sound. The drums sound a lot more present and less organic than in the song we talked about before. Still, we were able to keep the exact same setup with just some minor changes regarding the snare tuning. The things that changed the most are the intensity with which Pascal played this song. He played a lot softer here and used absolutely no rim shots and of course most of the changes were in the mixing process. If you're interested in this part of our sound recreations, make sure to check out artofdrumming.com where we have free mixing breakdown videos waiting for you covering the mixing process of our recreation videos. If you listen closely, you can also spot some cymbal overdubs and some tom overdubs in this song. 
Pascal listened closely and decided to at least add the symbol overdubs using the beautiful baby ride with rivets. Now this was enough talking. Let's find out what Pascal's version of Everywhere sounds like. Mick Fleetwood's very musical style of playing drums is what really sets him apart. It's not about playing the most difficult figures and showing off his skills, but about giving the music exactly what it needs. Sometimes 5 minutes of playing the same groove is exactly what he comes up with and it's genius and created worldwide hits. Now if you liked our version of these iconic Fleetwood Mac tunes, let us know in the comments. And if you want to use these or other sounds we recreated in the past in your own productions, make sure to also check out artofdrumming.com. We just now created some samples of some of the kits we used in the past and those are available for you to purchase on our website. You can use them to create your very own Fleetwood Mac grooves. What other topics should we cover next and which episodes were your favorites so far? Let us know and make sure to subscribe since there are so many more episodes to come.